Hi, I'm Michael Wargo, team pilot with Hobby King, and today we're going to learn a little bit of how to set up the linkages on the airplane properly to make sure the geometry is correct and you get the correct amount of travel and throw and so on and so forth and the, the right torque out of your servos and the right resolution. All right, the first thing we need to do when setting up these servos is we need to find center on the servo. So we need to, to plug it into a, your radio or in this case I'm using a servo tester and I'm going to find center. This function right here finds neutral and as you can see it is not set perpendicular. So I'm going to take off the servo arm and I'm going to put it in the perpendicular position. Now as you can see I have a little bit of a problem and that is that it's not exactly vertical. And there's something that a lot of people just don't know, even if they've been in the hobby a long time, but the servo arms have an odd number of teeth, which means if it doesn't go vertical on one side, it will be exactly at center, it will be exactly on the other side. So one side or the other, it will be at 90 degrees. The job you're trying to do here is set your servo so the servo arm is at 90 degrees. And if you, uh, for instance, have a servo arm like this and you need the orientation to be vertical, then what you'd have to do is put it, and if it doesn't come out vertical, switch it the other way and it will always be vertical. So at neutral, one or the other will be vertical. Okay, ultimately, with your servo setup, there's a few things that are extremely important. And we're gonna go over them one at a time. The first, if you notice, my servo arm is literally perpendicular to the surface. And that is very important. We just showed you how to set it up with the servo tester. Now, the next thing is, as you can see, that servo arm being perpendicular, the push rod is dead straight. And that's another thing that's fairly important to make sure your geometry is perfect. The whole idea behind this entire exercise is to make sure that the geometry of the servo and the servo arm and the servo control horn and the push rod that everything is perfectly done because if it is you'll have equal movement in each direction you'll maximize the uh, torque in the servo and you'll maximize the resolution when you're trying to actuate it issue number one is the holes in the servo horn have to be straight in line with the hinge line. That's really important. It's something that is often overlooked, but it's very important. In order to have equal movement on each side, it has to rest right over the hinge line. That way it will go just as far this way as it does this way with the same amount of travel in the servo. So that's the first thing you need to do when you're setting it up. All right. Right now, we have four sets of holes that we can use, as well as a lot of holes over here on the servo arm. I chose the second one from the end. Now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to be able to determine the exact configuration that will allow the servo, when it's deflected full, to deflect the surface full. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'll put a pin through here, and through one of the holes. I'm gonna try the second one here. And I am going to try and deflect it as much as it'll possibly go. Now that's as far as the servo arm will push it. However, that's about as far as it wants to deflect. So I think I got it right the very first time. Um, it's going to go in the second hole because when it's in that hole, as I push it and pull it, it will literally deflect the surface as far as it can go. That is ultimately what you want to do. Now, if I set it too far towards the end here on the control horn, that's going to limit how far the surface will travel. The exact opposite is true on the servo arm. The closer you move to the center, the less travel you'll get. The further out, the longer the servo arm, the more travel. 
obviously the inside it makes a smaller arc on the outside it makes a bigger arc the bigger the arc the further the surface will go okay before we actually get started i'm going to tape the surface flat and the reason i'm doing that is as you can see the servo arm is perfectly perpendicular which is where it's supposed to be and i want to adjust this so that it is sitting right over the hole at perpendicular we really want to set up every aircraft so we don't have to use any sub trim on the radio. Sometimes it's not quite possible without a lot of extra effort. And sometimes little adjustments don't mean very much, but ultimately we want the servo arm perpendicular and we want this to reach the hole. And as you can see, I have to loosen it a little bit in order to be able to make the holes line up. And that will keep me from having to make, uh, sub trim the radio. So I'm gonna loosen it a little bit. Okay, I have loosened it, and now I am going to kind of just stick a pin in it or something like that to see if I can line it up with the second hole. And basically, it lines up just fine. And it is centered, so when I turn the radio on, I shouldn't have to do any adjustments. It should be perfectly centered. Okay, the radio is connected, and as you can see, um, it, it works properly. Now, as you can see, there is no trim and no need for me to sub trim it because I set it up properly and I get completely full travel. All right, now that we have the surface set up perfectly um, in its natural state, uh, it's level because we set it up mechanically to be level. Uh, I flipped the plane over now so you won't exactly see the servo uh, travel. But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna see where full deflection is. There's up and there's down. The whole idea is to set the aircraft so that when I, on high rates, when I deflect the surface, it goes as far as its physical limits will travel. In order to do this, we have to use something called the travel adjust or endpoint adjustment. Um, in this case, I'm going to set up the elevator and here is the selection. Um, I've already kind of messed with it a little bit, but when I push down on the surface, I'm going to adjust this. You see the surface moving up and down? So I'm gonna take it to as far as it will go, and then I'm gonna back off just a little bit. So I'm gonna keep going down until I see it move just, there it is, move just a little bit. So at this point, it's at uh, 142. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the downside. I'm going to back it off, take it up as far as it'll go. And once it stops, I'm gonna back it off a little bit till it moves, there it is. Oops. And that will be my setting. Now I've done videos about this and I put a link below of my setup videos and I've also written a, a setup guide on how to set up the surfaces. Uh, this video is really more about how to set up the uh, you know initial setup of the surface and not the radio uh, controls. Um, if you want to have success in this hobby, you have to do things right. And this is exactly the right way to set up your servos. All right, at this point, we've gone through the entire setup and we're gonna, we're gonna test the setup. This is actually a, a production prototype. So this is going to be uh, its very first flight. Um, I had already determined that this was the right spot to put the elevator. Um, you can see it's in the second hole down and not the end because the end would provide more travel, but I'm losing a little bit of resolution at that point. So um, I can still get full travel on the second hole. So that's where I put it. And we're gonna test it and see if it's right. And I've got the same problem on all the other surfaces. So let's see how it performs. Mm -hmm. 